Hi guys, Steve Good here with the Scroll Saw Workshop. Wanted to give you a rundown on the features and the use of the Scroll Saw Workshop stencil printer program that I've been working on the last couple of weeks. I'm going to go through and show you uh, how the interface works. Also, I'm going to show you the different features and what it will do for you. Okay, the program you see on the screen here is the stencil printer. In the top green box with the two rulers is the pattern that we will be working on. As you can see, we can generate a pattern that's up to 10 inches wide and 3 inches tall. Uh, this program is intended to make uh, nameplates, key fobs, and small signs uh, that you can design a pattern and cut out on your scroll saw. Uh, down here in this panel is all the controllers for the different uh, shapes and sizes that we'll be using to create the pattern. In the pattern to the right over here we have the text input where we'll type in the name of the pattern that we want to use or the uh, letters that will appear on the pattern. Uh, below that is the control panel with uh, all the save and open and select the different fonts and different export capabilities in, in the exit. Uh, also at the top of the program we now have a file menu that basically just duplicates the control panel down here. Uh, we are currently at version uh, 1.6. This is a release version. That's why I'm doing this tutorial. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you want to do uh, when you decide to uh, make a pattern in this program is type in the text. Uh, in, in most cases this is going to be a name. So I'm just going to type in my name here and you can see whatever we typed in the text input box down here appears up here in the pattern. The white in the pattern is the size that it will currently print out at. So if right now we were to click print, the print dialog would come up. You can see we have the square which is the size of the uh, wood that we'll be cutting out and the stencil font shows up inside that. Uh, and those are the letters you would cut out to make your nameplate. Okay, obviously we don't want the nameplate shifted up here to the left, so the first thing I'm going to do is go down here to my size and shape control panel, and I'm going to take the blank height and just move it all the way down as far as it'll go. And in this case, we're going to be making a uh, stencil type nameplate. So I'm going to grab the font size, and I'm going to drag it over to where it fills most of the screen. I have the two text position sliders down here. Uh, the one on the right controls the horizontal positioning and you can see I'm moving it to the right. The one on the left controls the vertical positioning and I'm going to move it down and we'll say that's about where we want it. Now I'm going to go back down to my blank height, move that back up to where I've got everything nice and centered uh, that's the pattern that we'll now print out. A couple other things that we could do uh, to add a little extra to this pattern. We have the corner rounding down here where we can round off the corners. So I'll go ahead and move that up to about 50% and you can see that's what we have. Uh, another feature down here in the control panel is called kerning and that's the space between the letters and I can just show you here that that uh, literally makes the space in between the letters uh, uh, separated farther or closer together. So I'll go ahead and put that back at zero. If we were to click the print dialog now, you can see we have the stencil letters in the middle of the pattern. We have our rounded corners that we could cut out and of course this is the size of the piece of wood that we need. I'm going to cancel out of that. Uh, you can use the rulers up here to determine the size you want it to be. If you wanted this nameplate to be much smaller, you could go to the blank width. You could move the blank width over take the font. Of course we're going to have to make it smaller to fit. We're going to move the vertical down a little bit. Let's go ahead and bring the blank height up a little bit and we'll center it back up. Let's go back up just a little bit and now we have a nameplate that's a little over five inches long. Uh, so again uh, those are the controls you have. You have the font size, the blank width, the blank height, text position, are vertical and horizontal. You have the kerning which gives you the distance between the letters and of course the rounded corners or the squared off corners whichever you like. Um, if we get this pattern somewhat how we like it, 
Let's move this all back up. We'll take our uh, whip out a little bit. Say about to there. Bring our font a little bit. Let's say this was the size of the or the the pattern that we actually wanted. We can go over here to our save as or up here to our file save as. Click. We can type in a name for that particular pattern and save it. Uh, and then we could obviously come back and open that pattern again at a later time. Um, of course you have your print button here. This is the font selector. This allows you to select different fonts. In this case I'm using a stencil font and for this type of pattern uh, you can download uh, several different stencil fonts off the internet. Uh, one site is www.dafont.com but there's many out there. You also have the ability to export uh, this particular pattern to a graphic image, a BMP. You can export it to a PDF and when we're all finished with it you can hit the reset button and go ahead and set it back to our default pattern. Okay, that's all the features. That's the first type of pattern that you can make. There's another pattern that if we go in and select a different font, in this case I'm just going to use uh, an Arial black font and you can see that's no longer a stencil font. I can go up here and turn the outline off because I want it to be solid. Go ahead and bring my uh, height down. Come over here, turn the base on. Now I can make the letters the size I want. I can bring the base back up to fit to the letters and use my text positioning horizontally and again we have a pattern now that we can cut out on the scroll saw and that's the second type of uh, nameplate you can create. You'll notice if I hit the print key right now that I still have the black box around the pattern which obviously we don't need for this type of pattern so you have the page outline checkbox here turn that off and you can see now you'll just have the pattern without the outline. Okay so that's the second type and again you can use any type of font that you like with that uh, for instance, if I go down and select, uh, let's see if I can find something a little different. Here would be one that would be kind of different. Let's just go with that. I'll obviously have to bring the font size down a little bit. Uh, let's move it down. Move the base up to meet it. Shift it over. And there you have a totally different type of nameplate just by selecting a different font. Okay, let's reset everything. Now we'll go to making a uh, key fob. A, a, oval key fob. I'll type my name in here. In this case I want uh, a fairly uh, short pattern because I don't want to uh, have too big of a key fob so we'll go down to about three and three quarters inches long and let's take the uh, height up to one inch. Let's round the corners off really good since we're making a key fob. Bring the size of the font all the way down to match what we have. Center it up there, move it over to the right here. I think we could even go a little bigger on the font. And uh, you could print that out, drill a hole right here, put your keychain through it, and you've got a little keychain fob uh, custom made. Again, you have all the same features with that where you can uh, turn the text, li text outline on and off depending on uh, how you like to cut. Uh, the page outline in this case you want to leave on. If you, we click print now you can see we have the outline with the directions on how to cut it. If we turn the page outline off now and hit print all we'll have is the letters. So that again shows you what the page outline feature does. Obviously we don't want the base on in this case. So we could save that out and print it out and make a different key fob. Another key fob you can make uh, using a font that is installed with the program and let's click fonts and this particular font I installed is called MyChain. If I click on that, it generates a completely different type. In this case, I want to turn the font outline off. I'm going to turn the rounded corners off, make the blank all the way back up and the height all the way back up. And I'm going to make this key fob a little bigger. And to do this, you have to use some custom keys on the keyboard. The period key is now remapped to make the left end of the fob. You can type in the name. The forward slash to the right of the period key is the end of the key fob. Uh, so that's a font that has been installed and uh, you can uh, 
print those out just like that. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is how to do a sign. In this case, I'm going to go back to a stencil font. And we'll use Stencil Gothic, which is a font that's installed on your computer. And we can type in our sign. Uh, I'm going to go to all the caps letters. Beware of the dog. If I turn multi-line on, now I have the ability to have multi-line. I could also round off the corners for this sign a little bit. Turn the outline on if that's what you want to cut. Uh, we can take the font slider, make the font bigger, and as we do, you can see it changes the uh, word wrap on the particular font. Uh, we could also go to the uh, font selector, change this to red, hit OK, and there's your red outline that a lot of you like to cut instead of black. Again, we hit print. You can see at this point I've got the outline turned off, so we have to remember to turn that, the page outline back on. When we do print, there's our sign with the rounded corners that we can cut out. Beware of the dog. Okay, uh, I think that's uh, most of what I want to show you uh, with the program as far as how it works. Uh, the program is donationware. If you uh, enjoy the program and feel that it is some, of some value to you, I would appreciate a $5 donation. Uh, you can get to the donation link right here. Just click the donation button. That will take you to a web page where you can uh, do the donation. Uh, this link right here will take you back to the blog. And uh, as always, we enjoy having you there with us. Uh, let's see, what else can we show? We do have the export to PDF, uh, and obviously that just exports the uh, pattern to a PDF. And in some cases, uh, the PDFs print a little nicer uh, than the uh, BMPs do. So uh, if, you, if you need a little finer line, sometimes that works better. Um, there are features that uh, I know some of you have requested as I've been going through the uh, um, the beginnings of this program and asking for your help. I'm working on some of those features, but some of them are a little bit out of uh, my capabilities as a programmer. So if there's things that you've requested that you don't see here, um, it's probably because I could not find a way of implementing them into the program. Uh, I, think that's, uh, I think that's what we'll do for now. I'll uh, go ahead and call this demo complete. Uh, you can download this program at www.scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com. That's www.scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com. I'm Steve Good. Thanks for being here with me, and we'll catch you next time.